Hello, okay, this is going to be a little strange. This is not a presentation as much as it is just some random thoughts that hit me over the past 30 years. Uh, some of you are old enough to remember the spate of articles that were in the PPC Journal about Ulam's conjecture. It was a strange thing that uh, apparently Lothar Kolatz came up with in 1937. It had nothing to do with Stanislaw Ulam. Nobody knows why it was attributed to him. He, he said, I wish it were mine because it's so beautiful. But what it is is somebody, uh, Lothar said, suppose you just start with any number, let's call it x. And if it's odd, multiply it by 3 and add 1. Or if it's even, divide it by 2. OK, so let's pick a number. Let's say, Do you want to have one? I think I have one here. Oh yeah, let's start with 7, OK? So we have 7 here. Now this is going to scroll. Okay, so we start with seven. Seven is odd, so you multiply by three and one, that gives you 22, but then you do it again. 22 is even, so you divide it by two, that gives you 11. That's odd, so you multiply by three and one, that gives you 34. That's even. Notice how it's like jumping up and down, back and forth, getting bigger, yeah. smaller. Uh, that's even, so now that goes to 17. 17 is odd, so you triple it and add one, that's 50. We're all the way up to 52. We started at seven, we're up to 52. Is this gonna keep going up forever? Well, that one's even, so you divide by two here at 26. That's even, we're down to 13. Up, oh, that's odd again, it gets bigger, 40. That's even, it gets smaller, 20. That's even, it gets smaller, 10. That's even, it gets smaller, five. Oh, that's an odd one. So we multiply by three and that one is 16. 16, oh, that's a power of two. We're gonna go straight down to one now. 16 is even, so that's eight. Eight to four, four to two, and two to one. That's odd. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so apparently, if you start with seven, that gets to one. Uh, what was his name? Lothar Kolatz originally said, "Is it seems that every number you start with gets down to one. We don't know why. Nobody can prove that. And so they set computers, even starting you know, as soon as they could, to check out numbers way up into the thousands, millions, billions, <laughs> zillions, and nobody's found a counterexample. Everything eventually gets to one. Well, you're hitting uh, uh, powers of two, and then from there. Well, there's no proof that you always there's no proof that you always get to a power of two. Nobody's proven that. If we could prove that every number doing this will eventually get to a power of two, then we've got it proved. But nobody's done that. And that some of the best minds and some of the not best minds have struggled with this, and nobody's nobody knows where to go with it. Some mathematicians even say that this clearly is based on a type of mathematics that hasn't been invented yet. Yes? Entropy. Entropy, yeah, it's, it's entropy in action, yeah, yeah. Um, hailstone, oh, that, the reason why these are called hailstone numbers is because, you know how a hailstone forms in, in a, a hailstone forms in a storm, the, up, the updraft in the middle of the storm forces the, the, the little ice particle higher and higher until it gets too heavy for that wind and it starts to fall, but then another wind blows it up again, up and down, up and down, getting bigger and bigger until finally it's so heavy, it just hits the ground. Just like this number, did we started at seven, blew up and down, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, got all the way up to 52, and then eventually hit the ground. If you start with 27, it gets all the way up to 9,000 something before it gets down to one. It's over 9,000. <laughs> It's just a study, but now, back in the PPC days, I was thinking, well, rather than having a computer program I had running on my brother's HP 67 in Rome. Oh, I was telling somebody at dinner last night. Yeah. Anybody hear about an alarm card for the 6797? If you take a magnetic card and cut one quarter of it, one fourth of the card out, start from the middle of the side, go down to the middle and down, just remove that whole chunk and then stick it into the back end of the card reader while a program is running. The, the calculator doesn't look for the card while the program's running, but as soon as the program stops, the calculator goes, oh, I sense a card in here, let's pull it through. But it can't because that part where the wheel is is missing. And so the motor goes rear, 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 rear for about 10 seconds, which was enough to wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me it found a new alarm number. You know, so. <laughs> but that was my alarm card. And, but the, the, but I, I realized that instead of checking numbers all the way down to one, that's kind of silly because like for instance, we started with seven. At this point we got to five. Well, I had already checked five, right? Like a week before at the speed of an HP 67. 
So I, I had already checked five, so I might as well stop at that point. We don't have to do all this. Yeah. So I changed the whole thing. I said, okay, look, since every odd number, when you multiply by 3 to add 1, is always even, might as well not check to see whether it's even or odd at that point. Just divide by 2, always. And as soon as you get below what you started with, stop. Don't go all the way down to 1. So trying to verify these numbers, um, I changed the thing, and instead of calling it the Syracuse algorithm, call it the modified Syracuse algorithm. If you look at the PPC journal, you'll find a little program called MSA. That's what that is, modified Syracuse algorithm. You drop a number into it, it cranks it with this algorithm until it falls below what it started at, and then it pulled the magnetic card through and rang the alarm, and then goes to the next one. Uh, notice this path is much shorter now. Instead of all that, it went 7 to 11 to 17, 26, 13, 25, stop. So it was much faster, and I figured that would be a better way of checking Ulam's conjecture or the Syracuse algorithm, the modified Syracuse algorithm. <clears throat> However, while doing that, I ran across a pattern. which People were looking for a pattern in this. They saw these hailstones go up and down, but no pattern. Well, I noticed that if you start with, for instance, five, you, oh, let's see, what would it be, five, eight, with the modified circuit algorithm, you multiply with three, add one, divide by two, so five goes to eight, and then eight goes to four, so in two steps, you went to below yourself, right, so when you start at five, it goes to four in two steps, by multiplying by three, adding one, divided by two, and then dividing by two. This is shorthand for the for the steps, this is a little weird, but bear with me. Wherever there's a one here, that means multiply by three, add one, divide by two. Wherever there's a zero, it means just divide by two. If you start with five, multiply by three, add one, divide by two, divide by two, you wind up with four. So we're, we, we're below where we started. However, while mapping out these numbers, I noticed that not only does five do that, but so does nine. If you start at 9, multiply by 3 and add 1, divide by 2, and divide by 2, you're now below where you started. Same with 13, same with 17, same with 21, same with every, same with every number, which is 5 plus any multiple of 4. Oh, a pattern starts to emerge. And I thought, does this apply to anything other than 5? Notice, then, 3, if you start at 3, Okay, let's run this through. Multiply by three, add one, divide by two. Five, right? That's eight, four, two, boom. So we started three, went through this pattern, got down to two. Well, not only does three follow that exact pattern, but so does three plus any multiple of eight, no, two, power eight, of, of 16. So. If 3 plus 16, 3 plus 32, 3 plus 16 times anything, they all follow that exact pattern. Hmm. While mapping all these numbers out, I notice that 11 is the same thing. If you multiply by 3, add 1, divide by 2, multiply by 3, add 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, multiply by 3, and add 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, you wind up at 10, which is below where you started. And so does every other number, which is 11 plus any multiple of 2 to the 5th. Hmm. And I thought, why, why, what relationship do these powers have to any of this? Do you see the relationship of these powers to anything over here? Do you see the, the pattern? Do you see where, they, where, where it matches up? Where the number of digits. Yes, exactly. Five, there's five digits in this path. Five steps involved to, to get from 23 down to 20. It took five steps. So did this. Five. Four, these four steps, seven, seven steps. So, ah, now, okay, there's a pattern starting to form. Is this always going to be the case? So I started having this poor HP67 work over time. And all these numbers take one, two, three, four, five, eight steps. All of these take... Like 10 steps, and there were, it always worked, every single time. Every number which is 347 plus 
any multiple of 2 to the 10th follows that exact pattern every time. Now, of course, in number theory, you can never say, well, every time I've tried, therefore it's always true. But they've now run this into the bazillions, and it's, it, it, it apparently does hold. This in the literature now is referred to as the vector, as the parity vector, this, this little pattern. But I don't think anybody has explored the strange thing that I did. I took these numbers. Okay, here's all the numbers that take 10 steps, all of them below 2 to the 10th. There aren't any others. It's just these. Put a note in the margin that you've discovered a marvelous thing that somebody will <laughs> That doesn't fit in the margin. <laughs> uh, and and then I, what I did was I sorted them by the pattern. I don't know if you can see these. These, these are the numbers which are below 2 to the 10th and which take 10 steps to get below themselves using the modified Syracuse algorithm. And those are all there are. If you check from 1 all the way up to 2 to the 10th, those are the only ones that take 10 steps. Notice if you sort them into order not this way, but by the pattern, as if those were integers, you see something strange going on here. The last one, all, all the ones in a row than the zeros, this one, found out this is so weird. This has got to mean something, but I don't know what. It's driving me crazy. If you start, if it's to start at zero, okay, in your head. We have an accumulator now running in your head. Take the strange, irrational number log of three over log of two. That's also the log of three base two, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Take that number. Subtract one. So we have this just strange, irrational number. Start at zero. Add it. And then add it again. But now wherever there's a zero, subtract one. And then add it again, add it again, subtract one, add it again, add it again, subtract one, subtract one. If you do that, wherever there's a one, you add that number, log of three over log of two minus one. And wherever there's a zero, just subtract one. If you do that for all of these, you will always have a positive running sum until you hit the last digit. At that point, it will go negative. And that happens for every one of these. Positive, 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 boom, negative. And it won't happen for any other pattern of ones and zeros. Now, I, I, when, when this hit me, I thought this has got to mean something because these are the only numbers that uh, have a pattern of 10 in this Syracuse algorithm thing. And these are the only patterns of adding that irrational number and subtracting one, which will get to negative in that many steps. And doesn't this make some sense? Then what are we doing in this algorithm? We're multiplying by three and adding one. And dividing by two, right? Multiplying by three, dividing by two, multiplying by three, dividing by two. That sounds like it would have something to do with log of three and log of two, because multiplying and dividing constantly. So if you have this running sum of log of three over log of two and subtracting one, it goes negative. Does, does that seem to make, ah, oh, this is driving me crazy now for 30 years. Still here? And, and, I, and I wrote to the two, the, the two biggies in this whole subject are Clark Kimberly, a math professor, and, oh, what's his name? If you go on the web and look up hailstone numbers, he, he's, he's this, this, this one guy, he's like being expert on this. So I, I sent them emails and said, you know, is, does this mean anything? Never heard back from Clark Kimberling. But the other guy wrote back and said, he said, well, this sounds interesting. That was the end of it. They're busy writing. That, that's the way a mathematician says, thank you for your input. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And so I, uh, looking desperately for this pattern, I found in that uh, catalog of integer sequences, what's his name? Yeah. You know, that, that whole... Yeah. Uh, who, who's the guy who came up with that? He originally had a book of integer sequences, and now it's on the web, and it's constantly growing. All the interesting integer sequences are this encyclopedia of integer sequences. And he's got this one. How many numbers take one step to fall below themselves? Well, well, there's only one that takes two steps, only one that takes four steps. There were two that took... Uh, five steps. There were three that took seven steps, seven that took eight steps, and so on. And they, they on the website, they took this up to using computers up to this point. So a thousand million billion, well, a quarter trillion 
uh, numbers that take 50 steps to fall below themselves. But the way they got these was by having computers try them all. I've got this whole new thing that I'll bet that you could find the next entry. I bet I could tell you exactly how many uh, have, uh, uh, numbers have 51 steps or 52, depending, by taking zeros and ones and seeing what combinations of them as you add log of 3 over log of 2 minus 1 and subtract 1, how many, how many take exactly 51 steps to fall to a negative? That would be a, a finite number, and I'll bet it would be exactly this, uh, what this one is, because all the rest are. And that's got to be a pattern. That's got to have something to do with the proof of Ulam's conjecture, but I don't know what. Anyway, so that's, I thought I would present to you this, this pattern that's been bugging me, and if anybody has any insights as to how it could lead to a proof or help with leading to a proof, that would be massively cool. And that's it. Oh, okay. Thank you for no, I don't know. It's,